Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Ratio. In this tutorial we'll look at the key features of Ratio and apply these to exam questions. So what is Ratio? Well Ratio is a comparison of values or parts. We use a colon to represent the comparison. For example, if we were asked to compare or write the ratio of orange to purple circles, we write orange colon purple. Simply counting, we can see we have 2 orange to 5 purple. So we write 2 to 5. But what's the real point in doing this? Well, like we use a clock to show time, we use ratio to show proportion. And proportion is part or portion in relation to a whole. Now proportion is such a big area in maths. It's actually one of the key strands in the maths curriculum. Within this proportion strand, we also have fractions because the definition of proportion states it's a part or portion in relation to a whole. And when we write a fraction, the denominator indicates the total number of parts which make the whole. Therefore, we can use ratio to write fractions and vice versa. So let's look at our original picture and make the connection with fractions and ratio. Now the question wants us to write the fraction of orange circles. Now we have 2 orange from a total of 7 circles, so our fraction is 2 over 7. You can see the connection between ratio and fractions, where the whole for the ratio is indicated by the sum of its parts, and the whole of the fraction is indicated by the denominator. So we can clearly link fractions and ratio because they both show proportions. Now let's look at an exam question. There are only black pens and green pens in a box. The ratio of the number of black pens to the number of green pens is 6 to 7. What fraction of the pens are black? Now, firstly, we write the ratio of black to green, and it was 6 to 7. Remember, the whole for the ratio is the sum of its parts, and the total parts for a fraction is indicated by the denominator. So therefore, the fraction of black pens is 6 over the 13. We also have percentages within the proportion strand. This is because proportion is a part or portion in relation to a whole. And we know a whole is indicated by 100%. So let's make the link between ratio and percentages in an exam question. The question states there are only red, yellow and orange buttons in a jar. The ratio of red to yellow to orange is 7 to 4 to 9. We're asked to work out the percentage of buttons that are orange. Firstly, write the ratios red to yellow to orange we know is 7 to 4 to 9. Now using our knowledge on ratio and fractions we can write the fraction of orange as 9 over 20 where the sum of the parts is the denominator. Because the question wants us to write the percent this means we need to write the denominator as a hundred so we need to use our knowledge on equivalent fractions. To make the denominator 100, we need to multiply the denominator by 5 and do the same with the numerator, giving us an equivalent fraction of 45 over 100. Therefore, the percentage of orange buttons must be 45%. Moving all this to the side, you can see why ratio, fractions and percentages all sit inside the proportion strand. So let's extend our knowledge further and look at another exam question. In this question it says, Selena says the ratio of cats to dogs is 2 to 3 in a pet shop. Ben says this means there are only 5 animals in the shop, 2 cats and 3 dogs. Explain why there could be 5 or more animals in the pet shop. Well, the ratio of 2 to 3 shows the proportion of cats to dogs. So, for example, this means we could just have two cats to three dogs. 
Or we could have four cats to six dogs because the ratio of two to three still remains. We could even have 12 cats to 18 dogs. This is because the ratio of two to three still remains the same. Therefore, the ratio of two to three means for every five animals, there are two cats and three dogs. So the total number of animals must be a multiple of five. This brings us nicely to simplifying ratios and why we simplify. The reason is simple. It's because small numbers are just easier to use. Just like cancelling down fractions, we use our knowledge on the highest common factor and we simply divide by the highest common factor of the parts. Now, if you need to revise this, have a look at our highest common factor and lowest common multiple video. For now, we're going to look at another exam question. This question states that there are 20 red counters and 15 blue counters in a bag. We need to write the ratio of the number of red counters to the number of blue counters, but we have to give our ratio in its simplest form. Firstly, let's write the ratio of red to blue as 20 to 15. I've also drawn a picture just to help the visualization of the question. Next, we need to identify the highest common factor of 20 and 15. This is 5, so we simply divide 20 by 5 to give 4, and 15 by 5 to give 3. So 20 to 15 gives an equivalent ratio of 4 to 3. The picture also illustrates this as well, where we have for every 4 red, there are 3 blue. Moving on to another question, it states that we need to write the ratio of 12 to 8 to 20 in its simplest form. Now we have three parts to our ratio, but the principle is exactly the same. We divide by the highest common factor. And the highest common factor of 12, 8 and 20 is 4. So we divide every part of our ratio by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we have our equivalent ratio in its simplest form is 3 to 2 to 5. Now let's make a little room for the last element of today's tutorial, correct notation. When using measurements, ensure to convert to the same units. Looking at this question, it states that we need to write 30 centimeters to 5 meters as a ratio you can see we have different units of length. This would be an incorrect notation because our units are different. I'm going to change both of the units to centimeters. Because we have both lengths are in centimeters, we don't have to write the units. So the ratio is simply 30 to 500. Now using our knowledge on the highest common factor, we can divide all parts by 10 to give us a correct, simplified ratio of 3 to 50. In this last question, we're asked to write 360 minutes to 120 seconds to 1 hour as a ratio. Now we need to convert them all to the same units. So I'm going to choose minutes. 360 minutes is 360 minutes. 120 seconds is 2 minutes and 1 hour is 60 minutes. Now we've made all our units the same, we can now identify the highest common factor. The highest common factor is 2. So simply removing all our units and dividing each part by 2, we have an equivalent simplified ratio of 180 to 1 to 30. You can see there are many key features to ratio and how we use it to show proportion, just like how we show proportion with percentages and fractions. It's also important to remember with ratio how and why we simplify and the correct notation we use. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel. 
so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.